Thanks, Clemens. Um, I'd like to welcome Stefan Schwartz and Sebastian Findeisen from Daimler. It's great to have you here to share your knowledge and experience at Summit. Yeah, thank you, Dina. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. It's really a great pleasure for being here. Yes, it's great to be here. Stefan, there's been a lot of discussion this morning about the evolution of data and ML and how data teams, their processes and their tools are adapting over time. How's your data journey changing at Daimler? Well, I think like many other companies, uh, we are also somewhere on our journey. Um, our journey didn't just start recently, but it changed tremendously. Um, on a cultural perspective, it's like from a special group of people that make use of data to really building the bridge and having engineers and data people really on the same page. So really being part of that journey with worldwide production equipment with different IT system and that whole change like with how data is used and create value out of it would be quite fascinating. That's a really good point about the cultural changes. Um, but tell us a bit more about the technology side. How, how have you built this? And could you share some of the details around the data platform Extolo? Uh, yeah, well, Extolo is really our core uh, uh, cloud architecture, which is built within the Microsoft Azure framework. Um, we are have integrated our own security mechanisms, like build your own key and stuff like that, to ensure that it always is used in and fulfill our compliance and security needs inside Daimler. Um, one key success factor we are is that we are working very closely with our central IT colleagues from the Center of Excellence that are the internal uh, authority inside Daimler regarding Extolo. Um, and for example, they are building architectural blueprints that could be used all over the company. Um, so. Today, we use it as a big data platform, um, ma mainly for analysis and forecasting with large amount of data. So it means like Extolo cleared our way with bringing our own data into the cloud. So Stefan, we've heard a lot about autonomous and assisted cars and customer applications like Mercedes Me. Uh, but one area we don't often think about is ML in the production process. Um, I've seen your factory videos and it's actually very cool. Could you tell me a bit more about the role data plays in production? Yeah, well, um, data always played an important role in production. Like for a long time, we are creating measures based on our daily or long-term KPIs or experts make use of data to understand and fix root causes, downtime errors and so on. But the role of data and awareness of the value of data um, still increasing tremendously. Like, Regarding production, you could ask why so, but you know, car production and especially talking about producing high level luxury cars is not just one single complex process. It's a real bunch of highly complex, real different processes. And looking at Mercedes, we always had a very high expertise and really brilliant experts in our production processes. But coming to data, even the best human expertise comes to its limit when you're talking about really rare events, high dimensional influences. And so um, we learned that optimizing and in, uh, our processes and improving our KPIs, we really come to limits. And with data and the new technologies that come with it, we are now able to really better support these experts and give totally new insights. Um, so, Sebastian, could you give us an example? Yeah, sure. Uh, let us focus um, on one out of 20 different uh, joining technologies we have inside our body shop, which is called start welding. Start welding is basically a specific uh, method of um, those welding technologies where we track numbers of different parameters that, that describe basically the process itself. So giving you an example, we track the material, the environment conditions, and then of course um, process relevant information like the voltage, the current and the position of those robots. Um, so collecting all this information and bring it together is really one of the key facts. And um, to give you an example, our production or our welding um, process takes around about 200 to 400 milliseconds. And therefore we need a rate of one millisecond to collect it. And there um, you see the complexity of the process itself. And there is where machine learning helps us to understand and reduce the complexity of the process, um, which has basically 60 different or influencing dimensions. And basically, we can, with machine learning, identify the anomaly and, co 
identify the root cause of this anomaly. And today, a welding expert can use this information, which is basically visualize to find and adjust and, and improve the parameter settings of those machines. Um, so yeah, basically um, the machine learning technology inside stud welding helps us to really reduce um, the amount of work and therefore increase the efficiency of the process um, itself dramatically. So that, that's really interesting. So how does that scale from an MLOps perspective? Yeah, that's a really good question because in the past we started our projects always from scratch. So we started from new we, and when we made our uh, models um, production ready, we had to do a lot of manual work in order to keep the models up and running. So nowadays we use a lot of key components inside um, Azure or Xtolo and Databricks. Um, one of the key components is basically the Delta Lake itself, which is the underlying infrastructure for saving our data. And then we use numbers of different components like the job scheduler out of the um, Databricks environment, where which helps basically to run our scripts in an automized manner together with the Azure Data Factory. Another key element, um, especially for the ML uh, world, is um, MLflow. Um, MLflow helps to keep us track of our models and optimize the evaluation and the monitoring of our results, basically. So coming back to the example of stud welding, we are using a set of 1,400 features, basically, um, which are created out of the 60, 60 different parameters we originally track. And MLflow um, has, done the, has done the opportunity, together with the feature store, to track the performance of each algorithm we deploy and also um, to optimize the deployment as itself. So today, we are in a partnership with Databricks where we can influence Databricks products in an early stage. And this helps us to reduce our complexity and especially reduce the deployment time um, dramatically in our, inside our production. Stefan and Sebastian, it's been great hearing your story today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting us. It's great to be here and it was really a pleasure for us. Yeah, thanks again. And it was really an amazing event here. Thank you, and over to you, Ali.